of us have experienced the frustration of not being able to communicate with another person. For many people who experience disabilities, communication challenges are a part of daily life. Imagine being unable to relay basic wants and needs to another person because of the inability to speak. Well, what if you were fluent in another language or device, such as American Sign Language or use of a speech generating device, but for some reason couldn't use it? What if you couldn't understand the words and actions of others during a crisis? In this training, you'll learn strategies to effectively communicate with people who experience disabilities like autism spectrum disorder, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and traumatic brain injury. These strategies are based on best practices identified from studies of law enforcement training needs. You'll learn communication strategies to improve safety and to increase the potential for more efficient calls and conflict resolution. When officers interact with a person, it's important to consider that there might be a mismatch between the person's physical appearance and his or her ability to communicate. An adult may have cognitive skills that are closer to a child's. Other people may have typical cognitive skills but emotionally or socially function at a much younger age that makes it hard for them to communicate or participate in the community. We all use multiple ways of communication to best get our messages across in a variety of situations. We use speech, body language and gestures, writing, texting, and more. While the majority of people use speech, some people who experience disabilities rely on other forms of communication like writing, pointing to picture symbols, using sign language, or using a computerized device that can generate speech. My name is Logan. Great! How old are you? I am nine years old. When having a communication challenge in a crisis situation, officers may consider looking for clues that the person uses another way to communicate, like the presence of picture symbols, communication boards, or an iPad or other device in the room. There are several evidence-based strategies that officers may use to improve communication in many kinds of situations. These strategies are use a slow rate of speech, break directions into steps, provide wait time for response, and use concrete and direct language. In this scene, an officer is responding to a domestic violence call. Neighbors have called and reported hearing a loud disturbance from inside a house, and then a man and a woman continued fighting in the front yard. Some neighbors reported seeing him holding the woman to the ground and pointing a knife at her. One of the neighbors thought the man left in a truck. While other officers are interviewing the woman who appears to be the victim, the police are knocking on neighbors' doors. At first, the officer is talking as he would in a typical interaction which isn't working very well with this person with a disability. Hi, did you call us? What's going on? Did you see what happened out here on the lawn? Can you hear me? Is there anybody else in here with you or is it just you? Sir, what's your name? Tom. Okay, Tom, great. So, what happened out here in the lawn? Did you see him fighting? So, which, which way did the guy go? What did he look like? Okay, it sounds like you've got some good information, Tom, that can be helpful to us. So, I, I really need to know what you saw, because it sounds like the guy kind of split. He maybe just took off. So, why don't you just take a shot at it and tell me what happened? Okay, um... Did you see what happened? Okay, I'm sorry, Tom. My name's Sergeant Rock. I'm with the Anchorage Police Department. Would it be okay if I came inside and we talked about what happened, what you saw? The officer realized that his usual approach wasn't working and he changed tactics. In the next scene, he will use some specific strategies to improve communication and get the information he needs. 
So Tom, how long have you lived here? One year. Well, you have a really nice place. So what did you see right before we got here? They were yelling. He was yelling at her. He held her to the ground. I think he had a knife. She was scared. Is she okay? She's going to be okay. She was scared, though. So what did you see happen after he held her to the ground? I heard sirens. Then you came. Okay. Could you see what he was wearing? Jeans, black t-shirt, and gray tennis shoes. He ran to the house across the street when the sirens were being loud. Can you get that information out, please? Can you describe the house for me, Tom? Let's see what he did. Using a slow rate of speech helps people with disabilities process information. Stress and environmental input, like noise and flashing lights, may make it harder for the person to understand you. Slowing your speaking rate allows time to process. Breaking directions into sequential steps helps with comprehension and gives the officers an opportunity to make sure the person has understood each step. Too many directions at one time can cause a person to be confused or panic. Pausing and waiting after giving a direction or asking a question may help get a verbal or behavioral response. You may need to wait up to 10 seconds or more, depending on the person. Using concrete and literal language helps people relate directly to what they can see, hear, or process with their senses clearly states what you want and doesn't require interpretation. Avoid using sarcasm or expressions like, take a seat, or keep your eye out. In the scene, the officer initially said, give it a shot, and the guy split, which was confusing to the witness. By using these strategies, the officer was able to get the critical information he needed from the witness. These resources may be of help to you in your work with people who experience disabilities. Aging and Disability Resource Center, 211, and Assistive Technology of Alaska, or ATLA.